Egypt, the land of the pharaohs, has captivated the world with its ancient wonders for centuries. Yet, even with all the knowledge we've gained, there's still a shroud of mystery surrounding this ancient civilization that continues to intrigue us. Brace yourself as we delve into the unknown and discover fascinating facts about ancient Egypt that will leave you spellbound. Buckle up and prepare to journey back in time to a land of magic, mystery, and wonder. An incredible discovery was made in 2017 at the Dashur Royal Necropolis, south of Cairo. Archaeologists from the Ministry of Antiquities uncovered the 3,700-year-old tomb of an Egyptian pharaoh's daughter near a newly discovered pyramid. The tomb is believed to belong to the daughter of King Emnekama, a ruler from ancient Egypt's 13th dynasty, whose own burial pyramid is located 650 yards away. Within the burial chamber, the archaeologists found a wooden box decorated with hieroglyphics containing four pharaonic jars used for the preservation of organs. The wooden box also contained carefully preserved remains, including the deceased woman's liver, intestines, stomach, lungs, and the remains of a sarcophagus. Sharif Abdel Monim, the assistant to the Minister of Antiquities, stated that the condition of the sarcophagus was very delicate. This incredible discovery follows the discovery of her father's pyramid in April of the same year. Dashur Royal Necropolis was already well known for containing two of the oldest and best preserved pyramids, built by King Sneferu of the 4th Dynasty 4,600 years ago. 2017 proved that it hadn't yet given up all of its buried treasures, and there may still be many more to find. In ancient Egypt, death was only the beginning, as they believed in the afterlife. However, getting there was no easy feat. The soul had to travel through the 12 chambers of hell, facing demons, monsters, and fire-breathing serpents. Embalmers extracted the body's vital organs, leaving only the heart inside, the soul's home. Even after death, the soul needed to eat, so a sorcerer had to call on the gods to open its mouth. The ferrymen of the gods helped the soul cross the river in the sky, but the journey through the netherworld was even more perilous. The soul had to pass through twelve gates and speak the names of the guardians. Pharaohs even threatened the gods, promising to gain their divine powers by cannibalizing them. Finally, the soul stood trial before the gods, who weighed their heart against the feather of Mat, the symbol of goodness. Innocents would go to paradise, while the wicked would be devoured by the devourer and cast into oblivion. It's a very involved and terrifying tale, but the Egyptians believed it with all of their hearts. If you think that hair extensions are a recent invention of the hair and beauty industry, you need to think again. Hair extensions have been around for thousands of years, and we found the perfect skull to prove it to you. This is the skull of a woman who was buried in a city called Amarna some 3,300 years ago. But she wasn't considered important enough to be mummified, so she was wrapped in a shroud. When archaeologists eventually unwrapped her in 2014, they found that some of her hair was still attached to her skull, only it wasn't really her hair. There were more than 70 hair extensions attached in a series of layers, and in a quite complex pattern. When she was alive, her hairstyle must have been a remarkable thing to look upon. Other skeletons found within the Amarna region also show evidence of hair extensions, including one body that had extensions made of both black and gray hair. Oddly, no evidence of the practice has ever been found at other Egyptian sites. Perhaps Amarna was, like Paris, Milan, or New York, a fashion-leading city of its era. A discovery made in Avaris in 2012 seems to confirm the existence of a practice that was previously thought to be a rumor or a myth. Archaeologists excavating an ancient royal palace came across 16 human hands divided between four pits in front of what's thought to be an ancient throne room. There were no left hands found, only right hands. They're approximately 3,600 years old and date back to a period when the Hyksos people ruled over a portion of Egypt close to Tel El Daba. King Kayan was the ruler of the palace, and it's almost certain that the hands were severed as a tribute to him. Some historical records of the time 
indicate that the king would accept severed hands as a form of payment for gold reserves. The hands probably didn't belong to the people claiming the gold. Instead, they were presented by soldiers, who would have severed them from an enemy of the king. They might have come from Egyptian people, or from other enemies of the Hyksos from the Levant. Interestingly, there are no records of this practice in the original Hyksos homeland of northern Canaan, so it's possible that they picked up the gruesome practice from the Egyptians. In a triumphant moment for Egyptian archaeology, a fully restored obelisk was re-erected near the Karnak Temple in Luxor, Egypt in 2022. This impressive structure, originally constructed in 1457 BCE, was dedicated to the legendary Queen Hatshepsut, the second woman to ascend to the position of pharaoh. The obelisk was originally one of two that stood proudly in honor of her reign, but the bottom two-thirds of the structure were lost over time due to an earthquake or intentional destruction. Thanks to the efforts of archaeologists and engineers, this fully restored obelisk now stands tall once again, with the original top third and a modern lower reconstruction. The restored obelisk is made from stunning pink granite, standing at a height of approximately 36 feet and weighing about 99 tons. It is adorned with intricate carvings that detail Queen Hatshepsut's devotion to the Egyptian god Amun, the most prominent deity during the New Kingdom era. The obelisk's restoration and re-erection were part of a larger preservation project in Luxor, which contains a wealth of ancient Egyptian monuments and tombs. The obelisk had been lying on the ground for centuries and was in danger of crumbling apart, making its restoration vital for its preservation. Have you ever wondered why so many ancient Egyptian statues are missing their noses? The absence of these facial features has puzzled many art historians over the years, leading to various speculations about the causes of this phenomenon. One possible reason is natural erosion, as the harsh elements of wind, water, and shifting sand dunes can cause damage to delicate materials like marble and stone. Over the course of thousands of years, these effects may have caused the extremities of these ancient statues to break off, leaving many with missing arms, legs, and noses. However, another major factor that cannot be ignored is human intervention, particularly vandalism. From the mutilation of Aristotle's statue in Turkey to the defacing of past Egyptian monarchs' statues, the act of removing noses and other facial features has been recorded throughout history. While some acts of vandalism were committed in religious fervor, others were done in attempts to erase or diminish the legacies of past rulers. Another theory suggests that early Egyptologists intentionally denied and hid the African origins of ancient Egypt by removing the noses from the statues. However, the same phenomenon can be observed in Greek and Roman statues, indicating that this may not be a case of racism, but rather an act of humiliation or destruction. No ancient civilization has been studied more than the Egyptians, and yet there are still new things to find out about this mighty race and its empire. We don't even fully understand some of the things we found already, like the Temple of Kom Ombo. The mummified remains of several hundred crocodiles were recently found underneath the temple, thus finally explaining some of the markings on the walls. Unusually for Ptolemaic period Egypt, the temple is divided into two. We have two halls, two courts, two sanctuaries, and even two entrances. Half of the temple is devoted to worshipping Sobek, and the other half to Horus. The Sobek half of the temple is covered in crocodile paintings, but nobody could ever work out why. The paintings earned the temple the nickname House of the Crocodiles, but until the crocodile remains were found, most historians just thought of the artwork as quirky and unexplained. What remains unexplained are the engravings of medical and surgical implements on the temple walls, which are said to be the oldest in the world. Were there two separate priesthoods here? Was one devoted to medicine and the other to crocodiles? If so, what did they have in common? We don't know much more about Tomb KV-55 in the Egyptian Valley of the Kings today than we did when archaeologists opened it in 1907. The one body found inside the tomb has never been identified, and that's just the start of the problem. The body was found surrounded by artifacts and grave goods, but they all appear to be associated with different people. 
there's a gilded wooden shrine inscribed with a dedication to Queen Taiyi in one place, but there are also a pair of clay bricks marked with the name of Akhenaten. The casket is marked with the cartouche of Queen Kia, but its occupant is male. If there's a clue to be found anywhere here, it's the fact that the DNA of the male is very similar to the DNA of Tutankhamun. That means it could be Smenkare, Tutankhamun's brother. Smenkare was to be the heir to Akhenaten, so a connection with him makes sense too. The presence of items connected to Queen Kia and Queen Taiyi remains unexplained. It's almost as if someone hastily threw a corpse and a load of mixed up burial goods into a tomb thousands of years ago and then sealed it up before anyone found out what they'd done. The Seated Scribe, sometimes referred to as the Squatting Scribe, is one of the most remarkable pieces of ancient Egyptian art ever discovered. The strikingly lifelike sculpture is another discovery from Saqqara, but was found there in the Avenue of Sphinxes that leads to the Serapeum of Saqqara in 1850. Egyptologists have been able to date the piece to the time of either the 5th or 4th dynasties of the Old Kingdom, making it somewhere between 4,400 and 4,600 years old. As is implied by the name, the delicately painted limestone statue depicts a seated scribe at work. The eyes of the statue are the most lifelike aspect of it and are made from rock crystal and magnesite. In a curious detail, the nipples of the statue are made from wood. We don't know whether the person depicted in the sculpture is real or imagined, but the semicircular base of the piece implies that it was once fitted to a larger piece of rock, which may have included a name, a title, or both. The thin lips and broad chest of the sculpture have drawn comparisons to Pahernefer, a high official who was alive at around the right time and is recorded in other works of art, but the resemblance isn't so striking that we can be sure it's him. The Egyptians were ahead of all their contemporaries when it came to arts and crafts. To prove it, here are 27 ancient regal statues of Sekhmet, the lion-faced ancient Egyptian goddess of war. The discoveries were made at the site of the Temple of Amenhotep III on the west bank of Luxor. Each of the statues is crafted from black granite. This is a difficult material to work with and must have been chosen with a specific reason in mind. Perhaps the reason was durability. It was a good choice if so, because the statues are still with us thousands of years later. Most of the sculptures are more than six feet tall, although there are a few smaller ones that show the goddess sitting on a throne, holding the Egyptian symbol of life in her left hand. The temple is an enormous site, spanning almost four million square feet. To put that in context, it's as big as 65 American football fields. Archaeologists think it was mostly destroyed by an earthquake about 3,200 years ago. There's still plenty more excavation work to do at the temple, so more statues and other artifacts may yet be unearthed. If you have a pet in your home today, it's probably a dog, a cat, or something smaller, like a hamster or a rabbit. 2,000 years ago, tastes were a little more exotic when it came to pets. Monkeys were especially popular and were buried with great ceremony when they passed away, as we can see at this pet cemetery in Berenice, Libya. This was once an important outpost of the Roman Empire, but was also once part of Egypt. The monkey skeletons found in these shallow graves belong to rhesus monkeys. Even back then, though, there were people keeping cats and dogs. Their remains are also buried at the site, as is one falcon. One of the archaeologists responsible for the discovery was amazed by the tenderness with which the pets had been laid to rest, comparing them to sleeping babies. This is the first time that monkey skeletons have ever been found in a deliberate burial ground in Africa. It's likely that the monkeys were imported from India. They'd have been expensive to acquire, and so might have been status symbols for the people who owned them. After centuries of speculation about the construction of the pyramids in Egypt, archaeologists have finally solved the mystery of how the ancient Egyptians built them, according to a multinational team of experts in 2018. While there has been no definitive explanation about how the Egyptians cut, transported, and assembled millions of limestone and granite blocks, 
the team has found a 4,500-year-old ramp that they believe was used to haul giant blocks into place. The ramp was discovered by a combined team of archaeologists from the French Institute for Oriental Archaeology and the University of Liverpool while excavating at the Hatnub Alabaster Quarry near Luxor, where blocks of alabaster were cut. The team believes they have discovered the Egyptian system for moving the large building blocks based on their investigations, which involved the construction of a large ramp lined by flights of stairs on each side where large wooden posts were fixed. By pulling on ropes, workmen could maneuver the stone down the ramp using wooden poles and gravity. The discovery confirms the advanced engineering skills of ancient Egypt 4,500 years ago, when most of the world was still in the Stone Age. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.